Okay, this section is where I get to melt your brain a bit, but also look inside some of the newest AI tech. This all comes together in the labs, and you'll need this for the investment section tomorrow. But for now, the idea is to expose you far more deeply to the current AI dev tech as a foundation to your own work, and much to the disapproval of your chief technology officer who wants to, all of this to remain their exclusive knowledge domain. The truth is, AI is not magic. It's just layers of buzzwords hiding simple tech and even simpler logic. Okay, so due to our very limited time, we'll first just touch the main points of these components. And later in the labs, we will dive deeper into some of these items that are more relevant for today and the balance of this decade. Now, far, far deeper dives are in the Dev Bootcamp. So let's start with TensorFlow and tensors, or what the heck is even that? Tensors are dimensional mathematical representations of data. So vectors, arrays, dimensional arrays, etc. We talked about representations and abstractions of real world data into something that a machine can comprehend. And this is what tensors are, or a way of converting real-world data into something a neural net or an algo can understand and learn from, and more importantly, generalize. This leads to speed and reduced resources, but we cover how that occurs in the Building Superintelligence Bootcamp. We're not going to get in too deep into that. Just take it for granted that these methodologies save time and resources and money. Tensors can have math applied to them, i.e. matrix multiplication, calculus, etc. Which is handy when arrays of features and values meet arrays of probability weights or the foundation of a neural network. Tensors optimize this. Now we'll see these weights and abstractions in far greater detail when we build a simple neural net in the lab, along with all that fun math I threaten to expose you to. The most common math in a tensor for neural nets is simple matrix multiplication. And again, you'll see why in the lab, and you'll start to see why it is such an issue for resources and speed. So this is why Google and others are building tensor processing chips, or TPUs, and quantum computers and other specialized AI chips, etc. As deep learning grows along with data, the need for speed, or processing power, is also growing exponentially, especially in dimensional matrix multiplication. Now imagine how much power and speed we will need for AIs to fully understand and use multidimensional human contexts like deep sarcasm or responding to a world of highly general and constantly flowing and constantly changing stimuli like we humans do every second of every day. Multidimensional arrays, or tensors, provide for multidimensional or deep contextual cognition because we can represent and manipulate dimensions mathematically. If these arrays contain representations and abstractions of the real world, this permits us to open new pathways to greater optimization and greater artificial intelligence. Just like good sarcasm conveys deep context in an instant, so does deep context provide immense shortcuts in deep cognition by creating cascading contexts such as sarcasm to relay lots and lots of information all in an instant. That's what we humans do. Okay, I, looking at this, I would say popular in this context is maybe pushing it a bit. I, I would say, let's go with more, more like familiar. Basically, tensors are mathematical representations of a dimensional space and the elements within it. They help optimize dimensional operations like matrix multiplication. TensorFlow is Google's playground for running neural nets using a tensor-based methodology, basically sets of tools to run a neural net optimized for Google's tensor processing units. Now, computational graphs, you see that up there, refer to the steps 
of a model like a standard neural network diagram of nodes and lines that we use to describe neural nets today to move from input data to an output layer via a hidden layer. We saw shades of this in the simple AI model. In TensorFlow, after we choose a model, we initialize the data and run a session of training and backpropagation. Each run is called an epoch in neural net land, and the goal is to do this over and over while seeing marked improvement in the machine's learning. That's the goal. Now we'll discuss loss functions a bit later. We've already discussed and seen performance measurement in the ML model section. So this is it, a neural net in TensorFlow. We run statistics, i.e. obtain metadata from a data set. We create a schema, plan and control for the neural net. We do visualization slash exploration of the data. We do data cleaning and pre-processing. We covered that. We split data sets. We covered that as well. We set metrics and hyperparameters. We measure and validate the results. We give feedback, reward and punishment, etc. In short, TensorFlow is a framework to permit you to import your data, select models, and build and run a neural network optimized for a Google data center full of TPUs. And they get to see your weight matrix for free in return. But competition is rising, and there are other options and other places you can access resources in exchange for your weight matrix, or the most valuable thing on Earth right now. So next up is transformers. You will hear this a lot with the, along with the term generative. Transformer is the buzzword of the day thanks to ChatGPT. They are a neural net architecture used in natural language processing, or NLP, that allows for persisted attention or crude AI context. It is a non-sequential forward-flowing methodology used to predict the next word or thing in a generative output. Now we'll talk more about attention in a bit, but you can think of it this way. You're all listening to me ramble on and on, and if I stopped and asked what the heck I was on about, you could all instantly say AI, and you could all stand and give this boot camp. That's the transformer in your head doing its job carrying and using multiple flowing context states and streaming context. You are still much better than any current AI at deep context, but know there are existing design pathways out there to vastly improve deep artificial contextual cognition. Transformers take a text prompt or a stimuli or portions thereof and translates it into values and relationship weights to other words that it has learned, forming a very, very basic contextual flow as a response to your prompt. Remember the k-nearest neighbors from the simple AI model section? Well, now you can see these types of tools come together. In natural language processing, it is what is the nearest, most relevant next word for the context. Words have special contextual relationships to each other. And they can be grouped by context and flow in what is known as a contextual cascade. The transformer uses the relevant weights of those relationships to guess at the next most probable word slash subword, or what is called a token, in generating an output or response in context. It then moves forward and again and again until it passes a completion point or a random limiter to stop it going on and on, which I obviously don't have. It can also speed the process using a parallel mechanism to generate chunks of tokens or high probability groupings. It carries a very crude unidimensional context, but it is getting better, i.e. we're going multidimensional. We'll look at attention in more detail coming up. Embeddings are vectors, or unidimensional arrays, of word relationship weights 
to other words or contextual links. They are created by optimizing a numerical proximity of words to other words that define a crude linked context. For example, the word dog is different than the phrase, what is a dog? Both have context, but the latter phrase includes a definitive call to action context based on the relationship between the dog context and the context of the phrase, what is it? Or what is a? But dog by itself has context as well. This is contextual layering, and it is critical to both human and machine learning. Now, there are certain metrics that transformers use, such as the prevalence of a word in a corpus, or basically a dictionary, to help determine a relevance measure or importance. So they train on large volumes of data, and they tend to learn which words are more prevalent and what their importance is. So words like the, a or and have a high prevalence but are less valuable for attention slash context but have a high value for coherence of like you know as in a full human-like response to a query transformers place higher weight on less used words as contextually valuable note that words in chat ai can be portions of words such as ers at the end of a of a word also remember that ChatGPT's training is supervised by humans, so heavily biased with even outright false info and lies, creating an issue. For example, ChatGPT has been caught lying. I've caught it lying. Okay, this is the point where longer context, i.e. attention, is held. We move from encoder stack to a decoder stack, which just produces an output as a response, like a phrase, an image, a sound, etc. Masking is a control mechanism that hides padding values used to make word vectors uniform, but also to set low values to later words in the sentence to prevent them from impacting the model. This forces concentration sequentially on earlier words, so it, it no looking ahead cheating. That's what it's designed to do, some of these. Uh, this controls the response flow. So this is basically what we're doing is we're controlling the response flow. And we will look closer at encoders and decoders for natural language processing in the labs. Softmax is one function that converts or maps numeric values in a vector, such as a word representation probabilities into a probability distribution that adds up to one. You can also code something similar fairly easily by you know applying a sigmoid function and a distribution formula together to get the same effect. The highest probability is the selection chosen as the next token or series of tokens as output. Now you can start to see how we can layer functionality like nearest neighbors over distributions to add dimensions to our results. And this is the starting point of very advanced designs for multidimensional context, pattern recognition, anomalous recognition, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we'll discuss these types of functions in more detail, surprise, surprise, in the Neuralnet Building Lab.